In this video, I want to talk about a particular situation where your lane is blocked uh, because of traffic in front of you waiting to get into a turn lane. And we'll talk about why um, you don't necessarily want to go around them quickly and fill the void that is in your lane up ahead. You'll see what I mean uh, shortly. But as we drive up to that scenario, let's just talk about a few other things along the way. So as we're coming up here, traffic is starting to pick up again from the red light. The very first thing we're seeing here is this green paint on the ground. And that green paint uh, is called the conflict zone. You, you'll see that there is bicycle pictures drawn on the ground as well. They don't always have those. Sometimes they're faded. Um, and what they're really trying to tell you is that there is a bike path here and there might be something of interest to you as the driver on the other side of this bike path. So they're trying to draw attention to the fact that if you're going to be going into this particular road or this particular turn lane, you need to shoulder check and make sure that it's clear. So in a sense, the green paint is redundant, but it's there to highlight the fact that, hey, like pay attention, you might be cutting off a cyclist if you're not checking before you go ahead and get into that lane. So the next thing I want to bring to your attention is something that a, a road user is doing incorrectly, which is getting into an intersection to make a left turn when there's already a vehicle there waiting to make a left turn. So you'll see here at this particular intersection, they have a four circle light indicating that the fourth circle is gonna give them an advanced arrow. Now, the arrow is done, so it's acting just like a regular intersection light. And that is telling us, yeah, if, if you're the first car in this, these batch of cars, you can get committed to the intersection and wait for a safe gap from the oncoming traffic to complete your turn. But as we approach, we can see that there are two cars in the intersection. And this is exactly the scenario where you don't wanna be in if you were this vehicle here. Now, this vehicle in front should have been, uh, had their back wheels in the middle of this crosswalk while they were waiting to make that turn. Because they've kind of pulled forward a bit, this vehicle has like invited themselves in to this um, road here. Now, as you can see, the light is yellow and there are cars still coming through on this yellow light. So this person, you know, isn't able to make that turn right at that moment. So what's going to likely happen is you see yet another vehicle. How many seconds into this light are we? So we're coming up here. I don't know the exact second that that light turns to yellow. Okay, so the light changed to yellow at 1.55. So as we go kind of step by step into this intersection, 1.56, 1.57, in about one more second, this light's gonna change to red. So you've got about three seconds from when the light goes from uh, yellow to red. And you can see two of those seconds is pretty much taken up by this vehicle that is going through the yellow light. Now, obviously the vehicle that was waiting here, if you back up, isn't going to be able to make that turn while that person is still coming through on the yellow. So the question then becomes, what is this car doing in the intersection? What happens, and this is filmed in Vancouver, and I, I don't know what's going on in Vancouver, but for some reason it's like, they think it's a buddy system. I'll come in and we'll figure it out together, or I'll tell you what to do. This car starts honking and saying, well, why aren't you going? It's a yellow. And it's like, well, I'm waiting for those cars to come through. So it becomes a bit of a, um, not a great scenario. So long story short, one car, this car, in the middle of the intersection with your back wheels in the middle of the crosswalk, waiting there until you get a safe gap. And 
notice one other thing here. We're coming up one more time. So this vehicle, if they were in the correct waiting position, as soon as the light turned yellow, could have started rolling forward. That would have indicated to these cars coming through that, hey, I still need to finish this turn off. Instead, because they've pulled so far into the intersection, all they're doing is sitting there. Now, if this happens on the, on the road test, the examiner doesn't know what your plan is. They might say, hey, let's go ahead and make that turn, right? And then you might be like, well, I was going to make the turn, but they don't know that unless you've given yourself some rolling room. And that rolling room is important because you're going to send the right message to these vehicles. Hey, I'm not going to cut in front of you, but uh, the ones that can stop should stop so I can complete this turn. Anyway, so I think I've spent a bit too much time on this particular scenario, uh, but it was worth mentioning. Now we're going to be coming up to the scenario that was the intention of this video. And you can see up ahead, there's a bit of congestion from vehicles coming into this turn lane. You can see this vehicle here is kind of moving out of the way. Now you can do that as long as you've checked safely uh, in the other lane to make sure that it's clear before you proceed. We're coming up here and my student is kind of off, caught off guard and now he's asking me, well, what should I do? Because we're planning on continuing straight. Uh, should I go around this vehicle? And my response to that student was, well, what's the risk to reward ratio, right? You look up ahead, the light's red. So it's not like if I go around this vehicle and kind of fill in whatever space there is there, uh, that I'm going to be able to be on my way. Now, I can see here we've got a four circle light. So I know most likely these people will get an advanced arrow. And the other thing I know is I can see the back of this other light and I can see one, two, three, four. So I know these guys have an advanced uh, left turn signal as well. So chances are when our left turn signal gets activated, their left turn signal gets activated. And if these two cars are turning left at the same time, then um, the through light is not going to be green. And so this should clear up by the time the light's green again. And you'll see here, if I let the video run, you can see cars are kind of coming in and filling in this void in front of this vehicle. But really, what's the point, right? Uh, and you can see this person doing the same thing. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but at the same time, if you're in this lane, you see people doing things on the road and you're like, why? Like, what's the point, right? So if I, I see people like pulling out of here, going around and then coming back into this lane, then the light's red, right? If it's nice and clear on this side, go ahead and do it. But if there's cars passing by, then there's really no incentive here. So what I want you to do is watch the replays of this video and kind of think ahead and think about when did I see this vehicle or the congestion up ahead um, as, and you can kind of tell from the number of cars that are passing by here, would this have been a safe time for me to go around this vehicle or will I be able to pick up on the fact that, hey, uh, the light is red up ahead it's an advanced turn signal that the people on this side are going to get and picking up on the fact that the people across from us have an advanced turn signal. So it should be the case that the turn lanes here and across from us will clear up and then we can just proceed when the light is green. So the takeaway from this video is this reading the situation further out can save you um, a little bit of stress on the road, right? Like if you're constantly like weaving into in and out of lanes when in fact it's not really doing anything for you, it's adding more uh, stress on the road for other road users. And it's a lot of like additional movement that at the end of the day doesn't get you home any quicker. So if I now let the video run, you'll see the lights just gone to green. They've got the advanced green arrow. You can see 
the first car here turning left. And the reason R is turned green uh, and we've got the advanced arrow, chances are there's no one in the oncoming traffic side waiting in the turn lane to turn left. So in this particular case, their advanced light did not trigger. But nevertheless, I mean, I am inconvenienced for about, let me just see here, from when the light turned green. It just turned green at 2.49 and Now it's 2.59, the lane in front of me is clear. So I was inconvenienced for about 10 seconds. Is this 10 second delay worth it going around and coming into this lane, especially when there's traffic in the other lane? Probably not, right? So that's the takeaway that I want you to have from this video. Uh, and I hope that it was useful, you learned something, kind of reading up ahead and seeing what kind of lights you've got, what's the situation going to be calling for, so you're not doing additional maneuvers on the road that aren't really necessary. I'll see you in the next video.